up into basically infinity. And <laughs> I like infinity. Um, looking at the list, looks like uh, Bakari is going to be bringing us a little bit of spice. He's got that one Sableye, which is always fun. Uh, being able to make use of all those damage counters in a matchup where your opponent is playing a bunch of one prizers that you could potentially uh, make quick use of. That'd be fun. So uh, with the Zigzagoon and uh, the, the Sableye, you could certainly see like uh, multiple combis uh, being taken off the board, something like that. Yeah, and in combination with the four scoop up net, uh, really could see some pretty aggressive plays depending on how things shape up. And there's not going to be any sort of Empoleon V or blocking ability kind of for these Comfies. So both of these players are going to be running wild with that flower selecting. So some down and dirty dodgeball. I like it. Double battle VIP pass in the prizes for Raymond here. And this is how a lot of these decks have shaped up through this early metagame is you're not seeing a lot of ball search anymore. Quick ball, ultra ball, they're not really showing up in these lost box decks. There's one quick ball, you know, one level ball, but it's really relying on those four battle VIP pass. And having two of those in the prizes early, you're not gonna you're not gonna get those turn one. So yeah, it certainly makes things a little trickier. Let's go ahead and jump on into the action here. And uh We've got the double comfy. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Justin going to start things off there with the battle VIP pass. We didn't get to jump into the prize cards for Justin, but we did see three basic energies along with that Radiant Greninja, and there will not be a Hisuian Heavy Ball, I believe. Yep, there's not that in the deck, so going to have to uh, make quick use of these comfies and maybe chain those together to start burning through the deck. Not going to have access to concealed cards. Yeah, the energy is going to be kind of rough. Uh, th this matchup in particular, Vir uh, Giratina V-Star uses those energies to Lost Zone them for its attack, you know? Uh, Lost Impact is very strong against those powerful V-Star Pokemon and V-Max Pokemon. But when you're trying to knock out just a Cramorant, uh, losing two energies every time you do it. <laughs> yeah, y you can start to see how the exchanges go Raymond's <laughs> way in, in situations <laughs> like that. <laughs> Uh, of course, all that is going to be dependent on the size of the Lost Zone. Both these players understanding that and certainly will be uh, pitching cards left and right trying to make those numbers work out. Now we see here off that battle VIP pass, Justin also oh. has another one. So uh, this is how you want to start off the game here. Going to have at least the two Comfy, that Giratina V, and eyeing down... Something like that Cramorant and possibly that Snorlax, yeah. another great secondary attacker for this deck. Yeah, that's the, that's certainly one way to get that one prize Pokemon into play. And Raymond says, oh boy, what, the, <laughs> <what's>, <laughs> what are you trying to do to me, man? Uh, Snorlax with the thumping Snore could uh, certainly be a fun way to take some single prize attacks. It does require three energy to do that 180 damage. But with cards like Mirage Gate, you're able to charge it up pretty easily as long as you have seven cards or more in the Lost Zone. And there we go. The first one off that flower selecting is that Comfy. Yep. Never like losing one early, but cards in the Lost Zone are good. Doesn't look like uh, Justin wants to overextend just yet or play any of those additional cards to make use of multiple flower selecting. Just going to pass the turn over, see what Raymond's working with, and... Flower selecting is pretty good, you'd think? Yeah, uh, it's a pretty good ability, and we're going to see it a lot this game. Uh, again, it, you really just have some options. Maybe you can thin out a little bit, uh, but it really just depends on what you're trying to find and go from there. And looking at the two here, looks like a Comfy and a Pokestop. Yep, it can be a little tricky. Pokestop is a card that uh, you'd think that both these players would uh, like to use, just getting through the deck, getting access to some of those precious item cards, and uh, Raymond saying, you know what, I need cards too, so I'm going to play that Pokestop. Yeah, there is uh, a ton of items in Raymond's deck, uh, 40 trainers in total, but uh, it really just runs on this engine of Pokestop, and then you see here, Fog Crystal, going to be able to search the deck for a basic psychic Pokemon or a basic energy. Usually this finds something like another Comfy, uh, but can also nab that Sableye or an energy to attack with it later on if you need to. 
Yeah, this was a, a calculated spot by by Raymond at the very beginning. He he considered playing the Fog Crystal, and I said, you know what? Eh, if I lose a Comfy, is that really the worst thing? And sure enough, he gets presented <laughs> with that option on the very first draw, and says, okay, that's yeah, I I was okay with this. And sure enough, there's second Comfy. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Comfy is not on the bench, I, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. That is a, lo that is a loss zone. zone that's very low. <laughs> Here is the Pokey Stop discarding a Manaphy and another Pokey Stop, but finds that scoop up net. That is a way to get out of the active, reset that Comfy as well. We also yep. see Air Balloon. Be prepared to see the keys moving around. <laughs> that is the name of the game in these opening turns, and I think we saw another scoop up net just there. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Oh, Roxanne goodbye. going in the lost zone here. That is the only copy, though, so that's something to keep in mind. Well, we'll, we'll just be winning. <laughs> 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 why, why would I ever play this card? Go to the lost zone. That is true. You got to keep that winning mentality. That's why these players are six and zero here, looking to punch their ticket into day two. Yep, fully expect to see Justin throwing away a Roxanne at the soonest possible moment <laughs> next turn. <laughs> Just gotta establish dominance. Comfy on the bench. Oh for yeah, the the third or fourth time. This, this is this number turn. four. And uh, this is what a lot of players worry about when they're playing against decks like this, that these numbers stack up quickly, that we see four cards in the Lost Zone and not a single supporter played. Pokegear going to try to change that, and I think we did see Colrus's experiment. Yep, the powerful supporter card for this uh, Lost Zone engine. Being able to look at the top five cards, pick three in your hand, two into the Lost Zone, and with that, we're going to already be at six cards in just one turn. Yeah, this is this is pretty fantastic. Not a lot of resources needed to be used just yet. Going to go ahead and play that Colrus's Experiment down. Probably looking for a uh, switch out of the active spot. And you'd think a, uh, a Cramorant would be pretty nice as well. Well, I uh, found just that. Cramorant. <laughs> well, <laughs> though that sounds great. Cramorant in those five cards to go along with a switch cart, a uh, scoop up net. Uh, and I believe another Comfy, so it really just depends what Raymond wants here. That Cramorant has to be card number one, though. Or two. Oh, man. <laughs> the disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond heard you and said, eh, not in my book. Down with the scoop up net, Those, so some yeah. really good cards being taken here shortly. Opting for that third card Comfy over the scoop up net or the Clara. That could be huge in this game. Clara is one of those supporters for this Lost Box deck that really just puts it, put, puts it over the edge. Yes, yeah. being able to recycle the Pokemon that eventually do hit the discard pile, which is inevitable. You're playing a lot of one price Pokemon. These Pokemon are going to be knocked out. And uh, Oh, and this is... That's spicy. This is one of the ways for this Lost Box deck to get a lot more playability out of their cards. And punch that number even more. You see the lost vacuum. You remove a card from your hand to the lost zone. Then you get to uh, remove a stadium or tool in play. Well, why not remove your own Pokestop? Stop your opponent from using it. You already got your use out of it. Right. Seven to the lost zone as well. It's pretty uh, amazing start there for, for Raymond. And uh, Justin now has the Colrus's experiment to try to make a, a nice turn uh, of his own. But not nearly as many cards in the Lost Zone. And it's probably going to be a little trickier to get going as we've only seen uh, just the, the one Comfy, one in the Lost Zone, and one in the, uh, the discard pile. Looking through the five cards here, kind of the same decision for Justin as Raymond had in with his Colrus, uh, just having some extra of those switching outs that you can't really get rid of too much. And yeah, ops for those to keep. Gets rid of that second Giratina V and the Grass Energy. Now we're going to see the Flower selecting, and 
All right, well, that's an easy decision. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Not going to need that this time around. And uh, as Justin, you can already see, just trying to map out how these prizes are going to fall is probably the most important piece of this game. You can see the Cramorant is at least going to be taking one. This Cramorant trying to take a second. Maybe you work in a Snorlax. You have that Sableye with the Zigzagoon to take two if you can make that happen. And then maybe a Giratina V-Star. So. It lines up that Justin would be able to perform some pretty incredible things, but Raymond can do just as well with a Sableye of his own, and already eight in the Lost Zone means that Sableye could be online as early as this turn. Yeah, that is one of the best kind of points for playing this style of this Lost Zone deck is Sableye and its Lost Mine attack really just punishes the opponent and spreads damage around like no other, but... Right now, you got to deal with those Cramorant, 110 HP. Now, your own Cramorant are dealing 110 with Spit innocently. But uh, as of right now, it's going to be a back and forth prize trade. Yeah, I, I, that is one benefit of the just the way that the cards have fallen for Justin. Losing the, the Comfies early means that they're not around late. And uh, they f when, they're, when they're getting knocked out by Sableye in, in multiple uh, shots, you're taking two prize cards in potentially one turn with just the 70 hit points. It gets awkward. And you can see that a Sableye at this point is basically the same as a Cramorant, just one extra damage counter. One extra damage counter and one extra energy to have to actually attack here. But with 11 in the Lost Zone for Raymond, essentially everything is unlocked as of now. Well, looks like there's potential for a little more to be found. So Raymond going to retreat with that air balloon, move up to that comfy, and try another flower selecting. Not necessarily Ooh. needing to choose the lost zone, but choices nonetheless. I think it was a Cramorant, a level. Yeah, and right now it's, it's a little awkward that the Cramorant is going to be one of the better cards right now just because it allows you to get the prize this turn. Level Ball can find something like that Sableye, though, so really just has to depend what kind of route Raymond wants to go in his plan of attack for this game. Yeah, you'd think ideally the uh, the cramorant clara combos would be a great way to start things off, just take those prize cards, keep yourself uh, in the exchange. Um, but we did see that one of those Claros was dumped early, so decisions to be made, and cramorant is going down. That could be pretty big, honestly, Kyle. Yeah, these are these are tough calls to make, and uh, Raymond certainly has an understanding that extra damage counters probably are going to be uh, pretty useful here. So we'll see if maybe uh, setting up some damage onto the Giratina V at some point, uh, or just trying to uh, maybe maybe get multiple damage counters on both Cramorants so that you can take them both out in one turn. There's also a giant disparity in the amount of cards both of these players have played throughout this game so far. Raymond has gone through what seems like 30 cards or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Justin has like five cards in the discard and is still keeping up in this game uh, with that escape rope. Brings up that Snorlax, could maybe tank a hit a little bit. And now with all three Comfies using that flower, selecting 13 <laughs> cards in the Lost Zone. <laughs> and it's just going to grow. At, at what point do you stop counting? Because, because I, think, I think we've already established that, that this is plenty. <laughs> How many fingers? <laughs> well, there we see the first Sableye of the game for Raymond here. That means we're probably going to see a Lost Mine. That Snorlax is... Stuck in the active as of right now, but as you and I know, and everyone at home and everyone playing these decks, uh, they have a lot of ways to get out of the active spot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what exactly the play is here. You have to think that when your opponent only has four cards in the lost zone, not a comb fee to to make the additional seven off of a uh, Colrus's experiment, that maybe you're considering uh, just getting some some chip damage spread around, but. Uh, we see off this escape rope that had to be played in order to get the Sableye in the active spot. Cramorant is back in town, and maybe knockouts are in order. All right, we're going to have to see where this Lost Mine places the damage. You can't spread it among the Cramorants, but here I believe Raymond is taking the knockout on the bench one. Ten damage on that Giratina V. 
And uh, still keeping up in the prize trade. Still going to look pretty good. Uh, had to do a little bit of extra work for it, though. Yep. There, there's certainly a, a interesting dance with the uh, the awkwardness of leaving damage on board. We, we know those scoop-up nets are pivotal. But there's also uh, cards to think of, like the... Uh, the the this the switch that uh can remove things that we've seen that sneak into some of the decks. I don't know if I see switch card. Yeah, the switch card. I don't th I, th I don't think I see that in Justin's list right here though. Yeah, there is three in Raymond's side of things, but none for Justin here. So gonna have to maybe play around with that damage still in play for the remainder of the game. Here is a quick ball though. Gonna look for a basic Pokemon and. Who knows? Eyeing down that Luminion V. Can use that Luminous Sign to go grab a supporter from the deck. Yeah. The uh, Luminion is a, a great way to continue to, to push through your deck at this point. And if you're continuing to provide a one prize threat every single turn, your opponent is going to deal with that instead of trying to uh, damage these V Pokemon, you'd think. So. Uh, there's certainly some merit to, to getting use of it here. It's uh, Even though it is scary to play uh, a Pokemon with 170 hit points who gives two prize cards. Well, Justin already had the course experiment in hand. That so makes it easier. <laughs> no need to actually play it on the bench. You still get those two cards in the Lost Zone, thanks to this pretty powerful supporter. Now just trying to figure out what cards to actually grab here. Again, you're going to be one card away from activating Mirage Gate, that powerful item where you get to search for two different types of energy and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. But you can only play it if you have seven in the Lost Zone right now. Justin at six. Maybe if there is a Comfy somehow, you can get that seventh. And we know... In that giant hand, there, there's definitely that and more. But here we just see the spit innocently taking the knockout. Now four prizes each. Yeah, it's it's so dangerous to play down that comfy because the additional damage might end up being exactly what you need to knock out a card like that Giratina V or something like that. So we can see Justin playing so carefully, only going to play down a card like that if it is the exact pinpoint to get an attack off this turn. and. With the, uh, with the Spit Innocently already online, going to just take advantage of that. And we're going to see a, another peek into Raymond's strategy now. We saw the Cramorants uh, to the Lost Zone early on. Uh, is there enough cards to chain together Sableyes? You certainly would think so with the start of the Fog Crystal. And the thing we haven't really talked about too much in this early game, but as we keep approaching uh, each prize card being taken, Radiant Charizard with its excited heart ability, will be able to finally start attacking soon. And that's going to be one of those big, like, swinging knockouts that we see in this game. And granted, Justin also has that potential with that one of Sableye. You got that Glaring Zigzagoon, can take out two Comfies in one turn. Yeah, uh, and, and you can see how the math lines up really nicely with that Radiant Charizard and Sableye. If you're able to uh, deal this 12 damage counters continually with the t uh, 11 on the Cramorant, 1 to the Giratina, you remove 3 Cramorants that style. That's 30 damage piling up on a Giratina, and then you have that 250 perfect knockout with the uh, Radiant Charizard. Here we see that second Sableye, Psychic Energy on it, and we have another Lost Mine coming up shortly. Just going to have to depend if Raymond needs to actually flower selecting for some cards or if, Ooh. you know, we're, we're kind of done for now. Haven't mentioned the Echoing Horn as well, too, but I believe I just saw that in hand. That's, that's, that could make things interesting at some point, too. Yeah, uh, these Lost Box lists actually playing somewhere upwards of three. Uh, uh, Raymond does have a couple copies in the list, and that is a way to just utilize Lost Mine as a pretty broken attack. It's a good card. You know, being its namesake, I'm uh, very honored to see it played here 6-0. <laughs> well, here we're going to see the flower selecting. First one of the turn for Raymond here. I'm going to have a choice. Take a look at Justin's discard to see, you know, what actually should I take? What have you used? <laughs> I could knock that out. I could knock that out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, 
now again with now 14 cards in the Lost Zone. Plenty for Raymond to do any sort of shenanigans that he chooses with this deck. But I believe with that flower selecting, you don't really need too much. You just need to make sure you have an attack for next turn. So here we're going to see the retreat and the loss mine. Same play as last turn. Take the knockout on that Cramorant. 20 damage now on that Giratina V. Ooh, well, Justin doesn't have much. <laughs> but he, I, I think he just oh, needs... Oh, no. Yeah, he, he was one card away from being able to at least get a knockout. And uh, that's not going to happen. Instead, has to go with the Abyss Seeking because there's only six. If there were seven, he had the Giratina V-Star and he had the Mirage to, to get the attack off. Instead, going to have to play this really awkward position now. And... Uh, a, gives so much of the advantage to Raymond here. This is just a free turn now for Raymond and this Lost Box deck. You're really just trying to play this prize race of single prizes taking a knockout on each other. But when your opponent doesn't have that return KO, you now can just build so much more advantage. Yeah, uh, the Snorlax may not be the, the Pokemon that you want to target down in a situation like this. Certainly could see Echoing Horn being relevant, just trying to cash in on a knockout on something like that Kumfi, and then at least getting 10 damage onto the Giratina V. Don't have to waste any more counters, so you could uh, sneak the rest of those onto a card like Snorlax. And with that Kumfi being brought to the top of the discard of Justin's, you have to believe that Echoing Horn is going to be played here from Raymond. We'll just have to decide of, yeah, what other stuff do I need right now? Here's a quick ball. Does discard a Psychic Energy, but we'll be able to find a basic Pokemon from the deck. Now you can go grab that Radiant Charizard, maybe set it up for next turn. You can also grab just another Sableye. You can also just grab nothing from the hand down. Yeah, when your opponent doesn't do anything, <laughs> usually you <laughs> think that you can get a turn where you play Radiant Charizard and an Energy and you'll be okay. So if there were ever a turn to, to, to try to get away with one, I think this is it. Well, it looks like we might see it here. I don't know if there's the energy in Raymond's hand as of right now, but here is an escape rope, and that's going to be pretty big, bringing oh, up that cool. Snorlax in the active spot. Now you can use flower selecting yet again. And Ooh. Ooh, another echoing horn. Yeah. I didn't see if the other one was a switch cart or something of that sort, but... Ooh, it says, I only need one of these guys. You can have that. Oh, it was an air balloon, okay. Yeah, if you actually look at way the prizes are being mapped out for this game, Raymond's going to be able to take that one knockout on a Comfy, as long as the other Echoing Horn is in hand, which Raymond plays right now. You get that damage on that Giratina V, and then that Radiant Charizard will come in and do its best janitor impression and clean up the game. <laughs> <laughs> sweep, sweep. No, this is, this is so strong. Uh, it really has just been a, a master class from Raymond, even going Ooh. to cash in on that Galarian Zigzagoon at this point. I guess this is the one awkward part of the game where you are scared of your opponent finding that Roxanne, so might as well play down as many cards as you can, cash in on some damage, line up a knockout on that Giratina V. Now with 80 damage on that Giratina on the bench, uh, it, it it's... It's going to be a pretty big target on its back. And Justin's going to have to try to figure out something to do here. Mirage Gate is now active, thanks to that Abyss Seeking from the Giratina V last turn. And you have some choices. Granted, it's not going to be a lot, and I still believe there's a couple of grass in the prizes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think they were down near the bottom, so potentially one of those was taken. But it, it, it wasn't ideal. I see a lot of psychic oh, energies. No. Oh. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the double grass still in the prize cards. There is four of them. Um, but after going through different flower selectings, colruses, discarding them. It, and there's the ordinary rod just sitting in the hand as well. We're going to see that scoop up net. Snorlax to the hand. Comfy now in the active spot. It's going to be a big flower selecting. I don't think either of those help. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's, uh, 
That's, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Lost vacuum going in the prize car or going in the lost zone. Scoop up net. Will put the comfy back into the hand. And yeah, not even having the grass to use your uh, V star attack now that you have 10 in there. Found a quick ball. So you can start going through a little bit more. But yeah, grass been at straws at this point, it looks like. Oh, we see the Radiant Greninja. Don't know if we saw the enough waters for a Mirage Gate. There was the Ordinary Rod. If there was another Mirage, then maybe there could be something on the horizon here. But there was a retreat already. You'd have to think that the, the resources are going away at this point. <laughs> Jeremy? <laughs> yeah, grasping at straws, but only coming up with paper. I'm all for saving the environment, but those paper straws, whew. I, I dislike them very much. <laughs> <laughs> Concealed cards from that Radiant Greninja is going to find a boss's orders off the top of the deck. Uh, not really much else. Got another comb V, but if you're playing that down, that, that's just not where you want to be. That Giratina V star on to that Giratina V on the bench. Boss's orders on that Glaring Zigzagoon, and hope your opponent does not have a scoop up net. Nope. Just an may have an understanding a little better than we do currently. A lot of cards in that lost zone and discard pile, so counts could be starting to dwindle. But you're not asking for much. <laughs> yeah, with all the switching outs in this deck, you'd have to think. But Raymond's thinking a lot, and <laughs> it's kind of scaring me a little. Just the uh, way to get this zigzag out of the active spot uh, in combination with the boss's orders and a fire energy would do the trick here. Poke stop going to take a spin. Oh, oh there's scoop the scoop up, up net. net. Losing the boss in the process. We'll see what's left in the hand. And now with that scoop up net is just one away from actually taking a double knockout on the Comfies in play with Lost Mine. That's a great point. We see the pow pad going to, looks like, bring that boss's orders back in. Clara for safe measure, potentially finding some of those energies to close things out as well as uh, an attacker. So I think we're going to see the scoop up net on the active Galarian Zigzagoon, bring up a Comfy, flower selecting, and hope to try to find something like that boss's orders. Uh, another scoop up net if it's available, but there's only about like six cards in Raymond's deck. We know two of them. Now, thankfully, both of these Comfy in play have an air balloon, so you're able to free retreat. This is pretty much just a free card, uh, able to look through the top two of your deck. Yep, really considering the preservation of resources here, six cards left. Even considering, yeah, you still want to go for this comfy now. It's tough. You want to pair this with a bad card. Looks like Colrus's Experiment. Not exactly the card you're going to be going for here. Yeah, that's a bad card now. Oh, Ooh, Ziggy. Again, there's two in the list, so maybe just already has the one. Yep, maybe one more scoop up net in there. Could be uh, a game sealer. See that lost mind come down. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where this damage actually goes. Uh, if you do place it on Comfy and don't take the knockout, that's just an easy scoop up net for Justin to get rid of that damage. Uh, the only real safe place is that Giratina V-Star. Granted, you already have 80 on there. That Charizard will eventually be able to take the knockout. Yep, the only consideration now is uh, do you just set up enough damage on the Giratina so that you can just two-piece it with a Sableye, or do you just remove the Comfy? And sure enough, I'm going to go for that Comfy. And taking a look at Justin's hand, not oh. doing too good, but finds a couple switch off the Pokestop. That's not really where you want to be. Concealed cards. Finds a Mirage Gate, but we already know there's just, uh, there's just Psychic Energy in the deck right now. Yeah. It makes it a little tough. 
And this is where just the pressure on the amount of energies Justin has available to him is, is huge. Yeah. And we haven't even seen a lost impact in this game. There's no grass in the discard pile. And uh, I'm assuming that they, they all have to be lost zone. Yeah, they're just they just unfortunately were lost zoned early on and two are in the prize cards. Now that's gonna be the flower selecting for Justin Bakari here. Again, the hand not really doing too much. Finds an ordinary rod from the top though and Yes. You got to put together a lot here, but your opponent is at one prize card remaining. You have to think that the strategy doesn't rely around taking knockouts per se, but more so just uh, preventing your opponent from attacking. So a, a card like a boss's order or something like that uh, could be beneficial. We see that Luminion being uh, the potential target here of an ordinary rod and the yep. game is over. <laughs> Justin seeing the writing on the wall is going to look at those grass energies and say, be with me on game two, because we did not figure it out the game one. Yeah, unfortunate way to end things for Justin there, but you saw the power of Raymond's deck, this lost box just focusing on the Sableyes. You have that Radiant Charizard as a, just a super scary threat later on in the game, but the ability just to spread damage, set up your knockouts for later on in the game, and the fact that you have to plan so many turns ahead, it's really just like a, a really big chess match. It's, it's, it's so fun to watch. Both players really just trying to make the most of every single resource. And you see that uh, Justin just not able to, to deal with what his prize cards were, were, were dealing to him, not having those Comfies early enough, and uh, Raymond being able to use upwards of four Comfy on that first turn really just set the pace for how this game was going to go. Now Justin is going to need to start off a little bit faster for this game too. There's less than 20 minutes remaining in round seven. You got to think he's not going for game three shortly. <laughs> uh, being 6-0 <laughs> and, oh and being able to go first in a matchup that seems uh, slightly unfavored, uh, that has to be something that you're considering when you're going through that long, grueling opening game. So if Justin were able to win the game, likely it does take a little bit of time and... Uh, Closing out game two and never worrying about game three seems pretty solid here if it locks up a day two berth. Price cards aren't looking too bad for Raymond here. Does have a scoop up net to go along with something like that one on Roxanne in the prize cards. But again, hey, who needs it? You're, you're planning on winning anyway. We don't lose. <laughs> only our opponent took two prize cards last time. That's the plan. Oh, Radiant Greninja, why? Radiant Greninja hiding out in the prize cards. No Hisuian Heavy Ball for Justin in his list. So it's going to be a little bit rough here, at least for the early game draw. And yeah, you see here opening the battle VIP pass. Usually this is the spot where you'd love to take that Radiant Greninja along with the Comfy. Yep. Just going to have to settle for two Comfy instead. Well, you can already see <laughs> Justin, Justin say, hey, those Comfies were really good for you last game. I'm going to try that. I'm going for the double. This time around, Snorlax in the active, not necessarily ideal, but I think there's like 57 ways to switch that Pokemon, and why not the uh, the, the base classic. version itself? The OG. Oh, throwing away grass. We know that's dangerous. Hey, you got two in hand. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. No need to panic just yet. Ooh. Second flower selecting, and this is where maybe you panic a little bit. Ordinary Rod <laughs> hitting the Lost Zone. Oh, well, don't need that. Quick Ball is a good card. We're going to keep that and keep on pushing. Grass Energy on the Snorlax, setting it up for a eventual Mirage Gate, hopefully. Yep. Is this, uh, this is not a list with the twin. We have seen that as an inclusion in some of the decks, but Justin going for a more consistent route. Now, speaking of consistency, why not start off with a Battle VIP pass of Raymond Zoned? Able to search the deck for two basic Pokemon, get them into play. Probably going to be a, a Comfy, maybe another Comfy, maybe a Cramorant. I mean, at this rate, that Battle VIP Pass is going to get him backstage for an interview because uh, <laughs> as he good set up once more, the kid does not miss. 6-0, and oh, one game up on Justin Bakari, and uh, looking to his key buddies to get the job done here, going for a second Comfy and the Cramorant. 
could potentially see that opening turn one attack like we did in game number one. That'd be huge. Yeah, and all it takes is just one supporter card, that Chorus's experiment. As long as you find that, getting the rest of the flower selectings to finish the job is pretty easy. And here you see Level Ball to go along with that Battle VIP Pass, finding the Manaphy again. You saw those water energies in game one, so you're kind of a little bit worried about Moonlight Shuriken. Granted, we know it's in the prize cards. Yep, and uh, Justin is now uh, infatuated with his grass energies this time around, so <laughs> don't have to worry about the waters coming down. Flower selecting number one for Raymond here. Looks like Cramorant and another card that I cannot tell just yet. I'm going to guess that it's two cards in his deck and he picks one. Puts the other in the loss zone. That was a pretty good guess, Kyle. You know, sometimes you just can't miss. Yep, Kofi and Cramorant were the two cards to choose from. This is not a list that plays the Luminion V, so we aren't going to see a search of that Colrus's experiment just yet or ever. Uh, but of course, if you got the keys, TJ Khaled say use them. Ooh. Battle VIP pass and escape rope found off of the flower selecting. You kind of <laughs> want both here. <laughs> Is that is that the embarrassment of riches that we're looking for? I mean, come on. When you when you don't need battle VIP pass on turn one, you know that you're going in. Well, the thing that's rough here is you're just trying to find a way to get Colrus's experiment, and Raymond so far has not done that. Is going to have to rely on a third Comfy and its flower selecting here. Can we find a Colrus? Looks like Pocus Stop Sableye. Or a Pokestop could at least keep this turn going, but there are a lot of unfortunate discards, surely. But uh, there is a situation where you don't need the Chorus's experiment. A fourth <laughs> Comfy could get this done, potentially finding the likes of a um, scoop up net scoop up switch. Net. Uh, you also can find something like the Pokey Gear 3.0 with Pokestop, which will allow you to look at the top seven and try to find a supporter oh, card there. That would be great, Jeremy. I oh. don't see it yet. Those are three cards. While going to the hand, uh, don't really extend this turn. Already having retreated for the turn with that Psychic Energy, uh, we can see Oh, I think we see oh, that there's here. a Poke Gear. Yep. So ultimate deep thin. <laughs> now the gear comes down. Seven cards to find that Colrus's experiment. Ooh. Is that I a no? I don't think we see it. Ooh. Yep. I have bad memories with that card. I've done that a lot. <laughs> that exact art, too. And just nothing in the top seven for Raymond there. And with that, now we do see like a few supporters in the hand, but they're the likes of something like Clara or Boss's Orders. Those aren't really going to do a lot here right now and mm -hmm. this is where it kind of turns the tide you miss that turn one attack and from here justin has a chance to get things going yep. justin said all right <laughs> we have life it's time to go in luminium v gonna go ahead and grab that Colrus's experiment get the law zone up to four cards and that's when Justin can start making things happen. We can see that Cramorant come down, start to remove some of these compies, and maybe make it a little more difficult for Raymond to find these pieces that he's already struggling to find. I mean, the pieces were just finding a fourth card in the loss zone. Eventually, or you know, like a supporter. No, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Here we're gonna see a pokey stop from Vicaria. No. Oh, a rough discard of three cards. Was that good? No. Oh. Oh, gosh. Chorus's experiment looking at the top five now. Wow. A couple of psychic energies to go along with a Mirage Gate. Uh, yeah, all right. Those, those getting the loss. So now it's getting a little scary. The, the, the energy is starting to tick down a little bit further. Yeah, when you see the Ordinary Rod go down and then you already lose two of those energies to the, uh, the loss zone, it's, it starts to get a bit weird. But... 
don't need that many energies to get the job done. You'd love to use the cream rant at least for two of these knockouts. Well, how about another energy off the top of the deck? Flower selecting yet again, escape rope and a psychic energy. And Justin is forced to keep the psychic energy here because if not, you're, you're just going to be run dry. Another flower selecting. Again, Raymond doing a good job of keeping the board state uh, nice and cleaned up. Already using that flower selecting on the bench. Thanks, Raymond. <laughs> Looks like Giratina V-Star might make its way into the lost zone there for the sixth card for Justin here. And again, just not finding a, a good, relevant attacker, I guess, right now in this turn. You still have the Mirage Gate in hand for Snorlax, but... It's not where you want to be. Yeah, I think it. Or is that a lost vacuum instead? Oh, that's even worse. Well, the if you had both, that'd be okay. But <laughs> no, this is, <laughs> that's not how this is going to go. It, it looked like just like the one scoop up net or anything would have been able to at least earlier in the turn would have made things happen. But just so awkward the way that the hand has uh, evolved. To just three energies, a couple Pokemon in the in the vacuum. You're not going to get the job done with just those. Well. Sigh of relief for Raymond here now. Starts the turn with a stop. Only finds, oh, wrong order. There keep, we go. Keep that one. <laughs> Escape rope to the hand, but discards a Sableye and a Clara. Now you do have access to something like Palpat to shuffle those supporter cards back in the later on in the game. And we're going to see Escape rope bring up Comfy into the active spot. We're going to have a fourth card into the Lost Zone thanks to Lith's Flower selecting. And that will turn on the lost provisions from Cramorant, and it's going to start spitting everywhere. Innocently, of course. Innocently. Yeah. And uh, we see that Justin certainly understands that. It has the Snorlax with 150 hit points in the active spot off of that escape rope. So understanding that being able to take a hit here would be lovely. You don't want to give the prize advantage to Raymond this early. Now, already having four in the Lost Zone. Do you keep continuing to dig with Flower Selecting? And it looks like Raymond is going to do just that. Retreats into another Comfy. And already having used Pokestop. Uh, I guess you're just trying to dig for those Colrus Experiment. Yeah, we saw it in hand. So uh, I guess just getting to the Magic 7. Well, it's 7 isn't, irrelevant, isn't very relevant <laughs> for him. But uh, just pushing deeper so that you can start to use the Sableye. We know that that is uh, a go-to card in this deck. We do see double Comfy down, so that's also something worth licking your chops. One important note, Scoop Up Net was the card pushed into the, prize, or into the Lost Zone from uh, Flower Selecting. I think to grab something like that Quick Ball or Colrus's Experiment. Here we're going to see that Quick Ball find oh, maybe Sableye. You can also find something like Glare and Zigzagoon here. All right. And we see, yeah, Raymond definitely thinking about at, at least next turn as, as one of those big turns where something might be able to go down. Uh, five cards into the loss zone. No prizes taken just yet. No prize directly available right now. The Colrus ex Experiment could push this a little further. You want to make sure not to have an awkward decision with a Sableye, so go ahead and put that into the hand and check things out here. Five off the top. That is a pretty big point to make, Kyle. Yeah, when you have those cards that you're still trying to dig for in the deck, but when your deck's full of cards that really just help out your strategy, it's going to have to be tough decisions later on. Granted, I think there's a battle VIP pass in this course's <laughs> experiment, so that's a pretty easy one right there. That helps. We do like easy decisions. Looks like Pokestop to go along with it. And that's not bad. He said, I already got one of those. We're good. Now with seven in the Lost Zone, three away from actually using Lost Mine effectively. We're going to see an escape rope. And now we have the decision. Comfy, keep digging. And it looks like Raymond uh, is like, yeah. I mean, we are close to vacuum potentially getting over the hump here. That is true. Which would be pretty wild. This is going to be the eighth card. Vacuum could remove uh, his own Pokestop getting to 10, and then you just need to be able to 
uh, get out of the active spot. And I think we see that with the uh, with the uh, scoop up net in hand. Oh, uh, now yeah. it's now it's just how do you want to do the save light damage? I'm also just assuming that there's a vacuum in hand. No, th there is definitely <laughs> okay, that yeah, lost vacuum <laughs> in hand. One of the unassuming cards from Lost Origin being able to remove from play one of your cards in your hand to remove a stadium or tool in play. And we see here it's going to be targeting that Pokestop. That means 10 cards in the Lost Zone for Raymond. Just going to have to decide which one actually put in. Looks like, ooh, Cramorant, maybe. <laughs> I I mean, come on. <laughs> That's such a, it's such a good card. It's just, you, you have a, an understanding of how great all the cards in his hand are when you see something like that. And the Sableye is going to be promoted. We do see that Comfy coming down. So it's just going to be the 12 damage counters, and we will see a great look at Raymond's strategy and how he wants to place this. Luminion is such an excellent target, you'd have to think, that could oh, yeah. be the recipient here. Oh, actually opting not for the full five on that Luminion V, uh, making it 130 HP left, but you do play cards like Galarian Zigzagoon to break over that hump of that damage and that 10 damage on the comb feet in the active spot. Granted, can be picked up with a scoop up net, but if it's not, that's just an easy lost Mayan prize next uh, turn. Yeah, this is so smart. You get the one damage on the comb fee. It, it doesn't really ruin your strategy, per se. If, if you do see that card scoop up netted, you'll be easily able to remove the, the uh, Luminion at some point. And this also opens up plays for the Echoing Horn to really have an impact. And you could you don't need to have the multiple Glarian Zigzagoon turn. You can just get that single one down to remove uh, a double comb fee and take two prize cards. This, this is also playing around an attack from Luminion V as well, being able to shuffle itself back in with that Aqua Return. Uh, so a way to deny those two prizes, but you still open up uh, a two-prize turn on the following. And here we see Mirage Gate actually just nabbing one energy <laughs> for that Comfy. And this is a card that can attach him anywhere you like, so... This. That just means there's no other energy type in the deck for Justin here. This deck can do some cool things. <laughs> and he's he's <laughs> charging one energy for a potential retreat. <laughs> this is rough, man. <laughs> Justin has not found the right cards. It, it has not been the draw for him this match. And he's really struggling to find the pieces. Got to appreciate the effort of trying to get it all working out and we're going to see that Giratina hit the law zone. <laughs> An ordinary rod is the selection. Well, Retreat, Snorlax will get the attack off. Giddy Thumping up. Thumping Snore, 180 damage. Now you go to sleep, but you have to flip two coins to try to wake up. And with just one heads, that is not going to do it. Snorlax still taking a nap here. And come on. You're, you're in the limelight. You got you to wake up. <laughs> He said, I got three and a half minutes to take five prize cards. I think I could take a nap. <laughs> Raymond promotes that Comfy for that KO. So now you have access to Flower Selecting yet again. Already having 11 cards in the Lost Zone. That means everything is turned on. And we see Fog Crystal in hand to go along with the Psychic Energy. That's not bad. Can already trigger another Sableye for the turn. Down goes switch cart, in goes purple card that I haven't identified yet. Safe to say it's probably going to be a Sableye. It's a uh, good, yeah, it's a good card. Colrus's experiment, looking at the top five now, needing a way to get out of the active. Ooh. Maybe something like that scoop up net. And Galarian Zigzagoon is also in there. I think there was an air balloon too. So you could, you could potentially use that as the retreat and then make extra use of that scoop up net when when you want to get that uh, damage counter. This is one of those moments where you kind of want all five cards off <laughs> yeah, the course of experiment. Who's looking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not like that, Kyle. Not oh, like that. oh, okay. Now, with the Galarian Zigzagoon and that Scoop Up Knight, you can play it, pick back up, deal the 10 damage to that Luminion V if you want. Take those two prizes. You can also just take the knockout on the Comb Fee, which is pretty, pretty stellar uh, in this position as well. Yeah, opting to remove that Galarian Zigzagoon with that Colorus's experiment. So keeping that scoop up net in hand to go along with that air balloon. Yep. 
fun mini game going on on the side is how many dice is Raymond going to need in this lost zone to close out a game. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking we might get to the fourth one. You're really going to go with the fourth dice. I, I, he could go for it. I, I'm sticking with three. I think this is going to be, you know, like maybe two more flower selectings, three <laughs> more throughout the game. I don't know, I don't know if Justin's going to let us see another <laughs> turn, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, this turn, don't know if an overextension is exactly necessary. Got to just be thinking a Sableye coming down would be pretty good even some damage from a cramorant at, at, at any at any rate just performing an attack is going to be just fine yeah you see there one minute left on the round clock for our round seven here and justin already down one game having five prizes to take it is impossible to really do that here and since raymond won game one uh it's almost for sure that if this game does not finish, Raymond will be taking the match. So here we see a retreat to the Comfy yet again. Flower selecting gets rid of that drape on B. Not going to be needed in this match. You don't want those two prizes just laying around somewhere. Pokestop has the option to use it. Discard those top three cards. And we're going to see that here. We'll find any trainer card, <laughs> but all three of those are going to go to the discard. Yeah. You know what? I think you can take that. That's not, that's not going to be too bad. Scoop up net, picking up this Pokemon. Got to be thinking Cramorant's coming in this turn. Sure enough, is Spit innocently lined up. Damage counters all over the board. Justin Bakari, six seconds to close out the game. Uh oh. Do we wake up? We wake up. Just in time for a, a quick uh, scoop. Scoop up net. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Pokestop. Yep, not much going on in that hand. That's really been the story of the match. Justin just grasping and has not found the solution. Energy to Luminion. And that's a, that's a knockout. Thump and snore yet again, going back to sleep. Now, Raymond, it's going to be... As long as our clock is right, turn one of time. Depends on when the card was actually drawn uh, for this turn. All right, right, all I'm asking for is two Comfies and a... And a nope, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There's not enough cards. Yeah, and just to confirmation, Justin Bakari is turn zero, and we're just going to see retreat to that Radiant Charizard. <laughs> Try to take a hit or something like that. You don't really have to do too much. And granted, with all the cards being played, did Raymond run out of resources? But just the way the game is shaped up is able to take it. Uh, yeah, I tried to see if there was a ridiculous Sableye turn, double Sableye quad prize going there. It, it, it's not in the cards for Justin, nothing off the top. And our winner is going to be Raymond Long moving up to 7 and 0. Oh. Our first player locked into day two here in Peoria, Illinois, and doing it with the deck of the format that basically everyone was hyped about going into this tournament. This lost box deck really pushing the advantage that flower selecting gives you, that Colorus's experiment gives you, and Lost Mine is one great attack. Oh, there was a lot going on there. A lot of cards <laughs> flying left and right, a lot of resources to manage, and uh, that is mental gymnastics, and Raymond is certainly up to the task. Seven and zero on the day, going to be pushing that even forward, trying to go for the nine and zero. You'd have to expect, and uh, if you're getting through players as talented as Justin Bakari and Dex as great as Giratina, you got to think that you've got a shot to go for that nine and zero. Yeah, uh, you said it earlier. That battle VIP pass, uh, punch that ticket to the interview, and uh, we're gonna have that shortly. But what a pretty dominant round for Sableye in general, and. Again, like you said, these players want to play it out. They already get 